At this point, I want to talk a little bit more about the alarms. So let's go to the alarm uh, access area. So right down here, there's a little bell. And I'm just going to touch that little bell. And that brings up the alarms. And as I mentioned, we have a number of alarms on the screen here. Now, the first parameter is the high pressure limit, or P-peak. Then you've got high frequency rate, minute ventilation, mandatory tidal volume, spontaneous XL tidal volume, and high inspired tidal volume alarm limit. Sometimes you'll find specific alarms with certain types of ventilation. For right now, to adjust any of these, I just simply touch the parameter and I use the knob to adjust it. So each time I touch a knob, I'm sorry, a uh, select an alarm, I just use the knob to adjust it. And then finally, my last step is always to press accept. Now let's simulate an alarm and listen to the three different tiers of alarms that can go off. So I'll go back into my alarm screen. And the first two tone sound is the lower priority alarm sound. If that alarm continues, it will escalate to a three tone sound. So there's the three tone sound. So as we're beginning to see the alarms, a couple things happen. We see the alarm displayed over here. We see the alarm on top, which you can see on the other side as well. I'm going to go ahead and pull out this banner. And so on this banner, it tells me the last four or more breaths have exceeded the limit. It tells me to check the patient, and so it gives you some recommendations. And there's also a hot link right to the alarm setting screen. So I'm going to go ahead and push that hot link to go to that alarm setting screen. Pull it back out again, and right there, and it pulls up the alarm screen. So now I'm going to go ahead and reset that alarm. Once the alarm is reset, and it should take one more minute here to reset that alarm. Make sure I've got all the alarms reset. So one other one here. Then you get an interesting appearance on the top of the actual display. So this green area means that the condition currently is perfectly fine, but we want to let you know that an alarm did go off and just let you know that maybe you want to check and see what that is under the actual alarm log. And so that'll be the next place I'll go is I'll go to the alarm log to check and see what was that alarm that went off. So under the icon area, there's a little clipboard on the right hand side. So I'm just going to touch this log icon. And then there are tabs along the left hand side. And the top left one is the actual alarm log. And so we'll keep 1,000 alarms. And so I can look at the last alarm that went off, and I can scroll up, and I can look at a multitude of alarms. And so there are a number of things that can be saved here. I'll go ahead and close that down. And so basically the, uh, the alarms can uh, be silenced by pushing this little button over here. That's the alarm silence. To clear this visual, there is a reset button for the alarms. And so I'm going to go ahead and push the reset, which is down here as well, right next to it. And that will reset the visual indicator. The uh, alarms also have a unique feature in that, for example, if a high priority alarm went off, let's say that the patient got disconnected. And I'm just going to disconnect my patient here. Now. We have a situation where the patient is disconnected. Sometimes you may be in an ICU where there is a number of ventilators going off all at the same time. And this is a pretty critical alarm. Right now that patient is disconnected. And so as a new uh, margin of safety, we've added a new safety feature for a situation like this. On the top, it's kind of counting down. And right now I'm at 22 seconds from my disconnect. One of the new features that's uh, uh, a safety feature in the 980 ventilator is an elevation in the actual volume of the alarm. And so it just stepped up a little bit in terms of the uh, elevation of the volume. So if for some reason maybe a door was closed and someone was not responding, you have a critical situation where this patient is actually disconnected and it wants to let the clinician know 
where should I prioritize where I'm going and to which room I'm going into. Now when it hits 60 seconds, it's really going to increase quite a bit, which once again will signal to the caregiver, I need to get into that room. So I'm about there, and that's loud. That'll definitely get your attention.